Here we go with round one. We are on the draw, but we have perfect mana and a Zerta Droid to accelerate us. So, um, absolutely great hand. Playing against a clan maid. So let's see what he brings to the to the table. Looks like he's also in green. And he's going to make a 3-3 three, three pretty soon. And we are going to have to decide how to approach this. We can just play the Scorch Walker on turn 3. Or take it a little more slowly with Gruul Key Rune. Or oh, that's also an option. So, unleashing the Splatter Thug looks like a great way to get in some damage here. We do have to be aware that our opponent is in Selesnya colors, so there might be some populating going on. And I don't really want to block um, his centaur anyway when he has all the mana in the world uh, for cards that come bond or one of the many Selesnya combo tricks. So I'm, I'm quite happy with uh, just letting him do his stuff and, and us doing our stuff. Now, from the perspective of mana efficiency, we could use this, uh, play the Scorch Walker now, and then follow it up with Key Rune and Splatter Thug uh, next turn. However, I think it's better to just um, have the Scorch Walker in hand for now, and potentially Blood Rush onto Splatter Thug or Gruul Key Rune. Okay, we do need to let this trigger resolve, and then we unleash this. Uh, that gives us gives us the option to just play Rakdos Guildgate here. And now most Selesnya decks, or um, what I expect of Selesnya decks, usually is uh, just an attack with a Centaur. I mean, we can't block anyway. And then there might be a trick waiting for us when we attack next turn. Even Hussar Patrol is now an option, now that the island has come down. Okay, just a battering crisis. Uh, it does have evolve, but that should be doable. Should be workable. Okay, Splatter Thug is getting in there for sure, and we do have the option to just play Gruul Key Rune and maybe try to block with it, uh, block the battering crisis with it. Alternatively, we can also now play out uh, the Rebel Belt Maka as a way to um, also deal with his crisis or get in for damage. And that's actually not not trivial here. Um, we don't have the option to play the Gruul Kirun into something else, but we could keep open Putrefy in case there was something like a Knightly Valor coming down, which would also involve the crisis, so it, it would be a, a huge play. On the other hand, Putrefy is going to punish cards like Knightly Valor Anyway, and I don't necessarily want to use it on uh, the creatures our opponent currently has. I think Scorch Walker is best used as a Blood Rush card at this stage, so I'm more most interested in getting the Maka into play and hopefully making it difficult for our opponent to block it. Our draw should be pretty good in. Uh, racing our white, blue, green opponent. We can also leave open the Zerta Druid to threaten a block of battering crisis here. Uh, it's not likely that we want to do that, and it's entirely possible that the crisis just evolves uh, this turn. But I still think, well, we aren't giving up uh, anything by, by doing that. Now things uh, do get a little bit interesting. Well, we also see no attack here. Um, I was expecting an attack with both of these. Because the Snare Squad effectively stops uh, these creatures on its own. Now, if we don't attack here then the Snare Squad is going to tap down Rubble Belt Maka and we actually don't get a lot of uh, a lot done. If we attack with both Splatter Thug and Rubble Belt Maka, then 
one of them gets stopped by the snare squad and the other one is facing a potential trade uh, with either of these creatures and there's there's two mana from a from a green white deck so um, yeah there is there's quite a lot of things that can uh, that can happen here I think that our best play here is to play the key rune because it allows us to keep up putrefy and it is it constitutes a blocker that's immune to Hesta Snare Squad. And that way we can also attack with Splatter Thug and Rubble Blood Marker. And our opponent, if he has a trick, uh, still gets blown out by Putrefy or Scorch Walker. So let's see. If we play the Key Rune and then we leave open the green from the Druid. Yeah, it doesn't. don't think it really matters what we leave open here. We do have all the mana we want. And I don't only want to attack with Splatter Thug because that attack is easily stopped by the Snare Squad. And I'm going to let this resolve simply because I'm scared of our opponent doing anything in response. Uh, he is green white, so I think we have to respect that possibility. We've also drawn quite a bit of lands, so it's possible that we need to use our Ghoul Kirun offensively at some point. Skymark Rock actually doesn't have a lot of targets here, so we might be fine. So now the Kirun could try to trade with Battering Crasis, and it has grown to a 4-3 already, so I think we have to do something about it. And we still have a good target for our Putrefy, given that there is a Skymark Rock. Of course, this does mean that we do now don't have the Putrefy mana available. If our opponent has a Giant Growth, then we do get punished a bit here. Looks like we did get a pretty good deal, though. And we do have Zerta Droid working over time for us, which is which is quite important. Now, Ground Assault does deal damage to any kind of creature. And then we could use the Scorch Walker on the Splatter Thug to get rid of Hasta Snare Squad also. I think we need to get rid of Skymark Rock, uh, because getting the Zerta Droid bounce over and over again is uh, just not what we want to have happen. However, I want to keep the Putrefy for whatever follow-up he might have. Uh, it's also possible that there's a Tristani Summoner in our opponent's hand, but I don't think we are, we are beating that anyway, so... Well, we, we can still try, but I don't think it's, uh, it's very likely that that's going to happen. Now we can uh, blood rush the Scorch Walker. So I think, well, no, Zerta Droid always, de always deals one damage. And if our opponent blocks it, well, then we deal three. So I think it's correct to attack with it. I'm still assuming that our opponent doesn't have anything. I think he would have played uh, any tricks he would have had. Okay. Now, um, Aerial Maneuver does uh, blow us out quite a bit, but I thought um, we, we traded Battering Crasis for our Ghoul Key Rune, and any kind of trick that our opponent could have cast would have made a lot more sense um, to, uh, to cast then. Okay, there's a Maze Behemoth. And we draw Zortar Swine, wow. Um, so that's 4 plus 5 is 9 damage. Or we can just use the... Okay, so if we use Putrefy, then we could only evoke this... Uh, only Blood Rush this, sorry. Um, I've played too much Modern Masters now. Um, it does look like a very good Putrefy target. But we can also use Zerta Swine as a removal spell, of course. Um, not sure which is better, because if we use Putrefy now, 
we actually just deal a lot more damage. So if that was his if that was his best play, then let's just get in there. And I could bring him down to three and then two from the druid, but I'm going to keep the Zerta Swine in hand and see what he comes up with. That might be a bit worse against an insane card like Trostani Summoner, but I feel like we are still favored uh, in this game. And drawing the swine certainly helped, of course. No blocks, and I'm not, not going to risk the, the swine here. Uh, I'm just going to cast it because our druid has a very good shot, uh, chance of just taking down this game anyway. So adding another threat to the table means that our opponent's outs are significantly reduced. He might have the Tristani Sumner that we shipped. No, he has Illuminate Primordial, that's nice. Okay, doesn't mean it was kind of... Uh, well, it doesn't mean it doesn't accomplish much to have played this this swine, but don't think that's a bad. I don't think that was a bad play. Could have gone for the kill, but uh, I think we were sufficiently far ahead that we didn't have to do that. We also have so much burn in our deck that there is a lot of cards that we can just draw to end things. And Mountain isn't it, though. So now we're going to take... Well, depends. If our opponent has another creature, then he might attack with both. Oh no, he doesn't need to because of Vigilance. Okay, never mind then. So far, uh, everything is still looking good. Um, green, white, blue doesn't usually have a lot of ways to deal with the Zerta Druid. So I'm kind of confident that this is going to work out. I'm going to block here to not risk losing to some weird card. And that's it. Zerta Droid gets gets the job done. Might have been. Um, we should have probably have been a little more aggressive, but we had no idea about the contents of our opponent's decks, a deck, and he only played creatures so far. So I think it was very reasonable to put him on some kind of trick, even if it wasn't a great trick. I would have exposed myself to something like um, a dramatic rescue, much more by by just blood rushing for the kill. Now that we've seen his um, late game and more permanence than spells, I'm going to change my, my place accordingly and be more aggressive. I also think that our deck is set up very well uh, to beat his. So, so that's just because, well, we have the spells and he doesn't, so we can actually uh, make things work. And we don't want Bomber Core. Fighter Burst is interesting, but not necessary. There's also the option to just uh, go for a Ruination Worm, but it, because it does uh, fight through Luminate prim Primordial. But I think once the Primordial hits, then we are either forced to deal with it with one of our um, removal spells, or we just use our Burn, Blood Rush, and uh, Fused cards to, to burn our opponent out. And we shouldn't have much trouble with that. Okay, we have great mana once again. Pretty slow hand, but definitely not mulliganing. Because we can start with the guild gate. We have a double red for the fire. Uh, we could even draw into our um, rock dust to drop. But even if we don't, then we, we can basically stop whatever our opponent is up to. And then follow it up with a nice hexproof thread. And it looks like we might even just curve out perfectly here. Uh, Krokonera into Rubble Belt Maka. Into Rubblebug Rhino. Okay, Hastas and Esquad is fine. I think we can let our opponent have that. And of course, we do want to get our creatures down. If our opponent attacks here, and well, he did play a forest. If he had played another planes, I think I would have been very wary of 
combo bond and probably not attacked. Uh, not blocked, sorry. And now we can take things uh, very slowly. Let's see if there is a, an ice in the skies waiting for us. No, it's just a hustle patrol. Oh, which doesn't really bother us. It is it is great against Rubbleback Rhino. But so far we are looking at a, a very even setup here. Okay, Zerta Swine is interesting, but now Armored Wolf Rider has come down and we currently can't deal with that. Let's play the Rhino first and that way grow our Croconua further and hopefully threaten the, the Wolf Rider in, in some in some sense. Now there's always the potential for one or multiple tricks if we try go for for a multi multi block. So yeah, we, we just have to be a little bit careful. I think we want the Zertar Swine in play uh, rather than using Blood Rush because it's one of our few ways to make Croconora even bigger and to get in for damage. Now, playing this into 6 open mana is risky uh, when you consider cards like Mystic Genesis, but there are so many different cards in this format and we haven't seen this the spells our opponent has in his deck yet. So, yeah, I, I just don't see... A reason to play around anything if we just don't have the information. I think in this game it's going to be more relevant to uh, play our removal spells uh, smartly. And this Anni Annihilating Fire doesn't look too, uh, too great in that regard. Now we do basically have two removal spells that we can just use, for example on the Primordial and the Wolf Rider, and that would allow the Zerta Swine to get in. In fact, we could just attack with... Well, we can't attack with everything because our opponent still has a double block available to him. Um, however, I'm not all that interested in just wasting our best removal spells on a board that can be considered quite even. The only... Um, Problem is the lim 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 Luminate Primordial, and I'm going to try to um, block it with multiple creatures. And then, if our opponent has a trick, he's most likely going to show it, and then um, we are we are fine. It looks like the Primordial isn't even attacking, so we continue to th take things slow. And Armed Dangerous uh, might be a very nice card to. Um, blow our opponent out quite a bit. He's on 23, so we aren't even remotely close to killing him with it, but I think it's a good card to, to keep in mind for the for the future. And by that I mean uh, we can probably use it to, to just win the game, which is somehow what Armed Dangerous does. Ivy Lane Denizen is uh, a pretty good card, I think. Um, almost interested in just killing it immediately. Uh, with Annihilating Fire, but I think we can uh, wait and see what we draw. It's not that likely that we draw something that we can't uh, that we can't play. So here, I think it's reasonable to just play the Splatter Thug uh, without unleashing. Um, don't see it attacking anytime soon, so I want to make sure that I have some first strike damage to block. Still no attacks, two cards in hand, so we are pretty much in the dark um, regarding the contents of our opponent's hand. This is a Skymark Rock. I think that has to be taken down. It's not a green creature, so doesn't trigger the denizen. So far our opponent hasn't really shown a lot of cards that trigger the denizen. I think we try to we'll try to annihilating fire that thing out of the skies. And it gets bound. So at least we know that our opponent has only the Skymark Rock in hand, which isn't bad, but um, all the information we can get is is quite valuable. So 
we are kind of threatening, not not lethal yet, but we are threatening lethal um, with the help of double strike and the blood rush cards. But we need to use six mana on armed dangerous, so it is pretty much um, well, pretty much dealing sixteen with. Uh, blood rushed Zercha Swine, making everything block Splatter Thug, and then dealing another 6 plus 5, 11. Uh, so 16, that's 27 damage. So we are basically threatening lethal next turn uh, if we just drop the Zercha Swine here for mana efficiency reasons. And I think that's uh, pretty good. We also know that our opponent is very likely to play a green creature should he draw it, or basically play any creature should he draw it. There is really no reason to hold it back. So I think even if our opponent doesn't play anything, we just put him on having drawn a land here and then just try to go for the for the win. Uh, this is just too too good of an option to, to not go for it. So we give Zerta Swine plus one plus one and double strike and we force everything to block the Splatter Thug. And we even, we even deal two additional damage because armed also gives uh, plus one plus one. So that's already 12 plus 11 damage, but we do have the Bubble Belt Mark High in addition to that. Oh, I could have... Um, could have used a dangerous on the rubber back uh, uh, rhino. That would have been a lot better. I I didn't really think about that. I only thought about the outs our opponent could have, and um, that he was only drawing a single card that we didn't know. So this is twelve plus eleven is twenty three. So we have to blood rush the marker after. Um, putting these in some kind of random order, I think I just uh, leave it as as it is. Uh, because uh, Splatterthug isn't going to kill any creature anyway. So we are going to deal quite a lot of damage. Okay, looks like we got there with our Fuse card. As I said, it would have been better to um, use Dangerous on the Bubble Mark, uh, on the Bubble Mark Rhino to make sure that uh, there wasn't... Well, th just to reduce our outs, uh, the outs of our opponent even more. But uh, that worked out beautifully, and I'll be back for round two.